Welcome to ESD School, brought to you by Attract. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the video. Uh, now, uh, on, the, on, the, on the theory point of view, your incision should be anticipated and fucked uh, to help your strategy and to be uh, uh, helpful and uh, logical for the strategy you have chosen. First, uh, you should uh, have an injection that helps you uh, because what you want is to cut something that face the scope. So doing a mountain facing you like it was for injection is very important um, and is really more simple to cut the B position than uh, working at the top of the mountain or working in a fold in a downhill. So the B is the best one to be effective. Second point, um, you, you should uh, do your incision if possible in retrovision for the oral part in the colorectum. Why? Because if you do it in a direct forward position, you are doing an incision and a trimming in the opposite way of the lesion. So you don't begin the dissection. If you do it uh, with a retroflexion, you will cut and do your trimming towards the lesion. So the trimming is effective, is useful. Also, it is not in forward position. Here we have a small example of a lesion uh, that is difficult to access uh, in direct uh, position. It is very difficult to find the, the, the injection um, doing it uh, in direct viewing. But we do the retroflexion. It is a lesion close to the right angle. We pass into uh, retroflexion and then your direction is to the lesion, towards the lesion. So um, by doing this, you will have an injection, but also an incision, which is more effective because it goes to the lesion and it begins the ESD process. So it is not always feasible and thanks to traction, it's feasible to do an incision in the, at the oral side by using a straight uh, forward position. But if you can do your retroflexion, you will have a more effective incision and trimming because it is directed to the lesion and uh, uh, it will help you and begin the ESD process. You are already cutting some fibers that are under the area you will resect. If you do it uh, in a straightforward position, you are doing an incision, but uh, in a part you will not resect. So less effective, in fact. Next point, um, it is not always uh, uh, the case, but in some position, it's impossible to be close to the lesion in uh, retroflexion. Because when you push your scope, uh, in fact, you uh, increase the retroflexion uh, and you go more, uh, more uh, deeper in the colon, you are uh, going far from the lesion. But in this case, sometime like here, if I push, I go uh, more far, there is a solution which is not very elegant, not very um, uh, with tip control, but you can work by uh, pushing your knife uh, more uh, deeper, uh, even if the, the tip control is less effective. Uh, in this case, for example, another example, uh, we uh, try to pull the scope to do the retroflexion but it closes uh, the bowel angle and in fact it's not so easy to uh, to try and to cut and then pushing the knife in this case uh, will be uh, in fact effective so we inject and then we try to slide i cannot go there 
with my scope because in fact when I go I close the angle we are in the in the recto sigmoid junction but it is possible to cut by uh, advancing the knife deeply 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 and sliding at the surface I'm tangential so no risk of perforation and at least the second part of the fold is treated and I will be able to achieve the resection by coming back in uh, direct viewing for the, 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 the other part of the procedure. The incision should be adapted to your strategy uh, and when you will use a conventional multi-traction strategy you should do first the oral incision because it helps you to, to, to do it at the beginning and then the anal incision, then the two sides and then the multi-traction strategy will be placed. This is an example of such uh, an uh, incision. Uh, it is a, a strange lesion, a non-granular LST with two different components in the rectum, uh, upper rectum, uh, quite difficult to see. And we will see that we uh, do the incision circumferentially. So we begin here and we do all uh, the, the incision. So we adapt ourselves to the axis of uh, the device. And we will turn around the lesion. Here it was quite difficult because there was a fold uh, here in the, the right upper part because of gravity. So uh, I had to inject again to, to in fact, disappear the, the, the fold and the valet. So here you see the valet. The best way is to re-inject here in order to, to make the valet disappear and create a hill. Nevertheless, it was not easy to do. So I changed my, my position to do it from the opposite side and go back to it because it was not so easy to create. So once again, the small hole and then the movement and here, because I stretched the mucosa, it was easier to go there. The valet will be again a little disturbing, but uh, we will manage by re-injecting small bleeding. It is uh, usually good to, to go to the bleeding and treat it without really searching the precise point because sometimes it, it works and you, you save time. And here, thanks to the, to the cap, it is feasible to stretch the mucosa and uh, remove the fold. I'm a little perpendicular, but uh, I don't push so much in order to avoid perforation from the beginning and injection was okay. And now uh, the, the, the incision is done on the right side and at the oral side. And what is remaining is uh, the anal side and the left part. And we will do it soon. So I do my trimming at the same time, go back <coughs> to the side here, inject with the knife. We are in the rectum, so no, no risk of doing the injection with the knife from the beginning. We try to slide once again the ceramic at the surface and the needle in two, just to control to see where I'm going to know the position. There is no GPS for the moment uh, uh, during ESD, but it could be helpful by AI to, to have something that shows where you want to go uh, instead of doing dots. And here, now I'm here, I try to avoid uh, traction. So instead of tracting, I will go back uh, from six o'clock and then join by pushing, which is safer, to the left, injecting again to remove the fold, like this. Here. And to the opposite side.
So because we will use fraction, our strategy is to complete the circumferential incision because once the traction will be in place, it will uh, be more difficult to turn around and do the wool incision uh, dealing with the, the traction device. So if you choose a traction strategy, doing the circumferential incision is usually good. But if, uh, for example, you have a tunnel strategy, the incision should be totally different. Uh, here we are in the oesophagus, we just want to do a tunnel uh, for a squamous cell carcinoma. And here we will do uh, a smile shape incision, but an inverted smile shape, because what we want is to go into uh, the tunnel, but um, beginning in fact the two sides of the lesion. So we will, we will, we will not perform a smile, uh, going uh, like in the colon uh, um, after us, but in the axis of the lesion. And we will enter into uh, this tunnel. There is a small bleeding, which is uh, quite uh, usual. Uh, the vessels um, are relatively big in the muscularis mucosa in the oesophagus, so it, it's uh, really frequent to have a small bleeding, but we try to deal with it. Uh, when you have a bleeding, uh, if it is at the edge of your incision, you should you should uh, do a larger incision, a little, because if there is a bleeding in a blind part, not open, it's very difficult to deal with. If you open the space and see where the bleeding is, it's more simple. So when you have a small bleeding during your incision, follow your incision, increase a little the size of your incision, and you will be able to uh, detect the bleeding point. Last part, the pocket creation method, same than tunnel. Uh, when you want to enter into a pocket and to work into a pocket, you should have a quite small incision because by doing a small incision, you reduce the leakage and you have more stretching in the two sides of your smile. So, uh, it will open the, the, the entrance of your tunnel to go into uh, the lesion, uh, under the lesion. So uh, when you want to do a pocket, the strategy is not to do a full circumferential incision, but uh, really to do an incision that allows you to go uh, under the lesion. Once again, uh, you will enter, do your pocket and dissect under by using the entrance of the pocket that should be relatively small. And you will achieve your incision later. Mm, last point, uh, your incision should be uh, with relatively large margin because if you want to use a traction strategy, if you have a small margin, it's very difficult uh, to uh, catch the edge of the lesion without damaging the lesion itself so uh, once again, having large margin is very important uh, and it's not losing time to take more margin. Um, here we use the attract device to do a traction. But if you have done a very small uh, margin, it's very difficult to catch healthy tissue uh, at the edge without damaging the lesion. So once again, take large margin, you will save time and not lose time uh, at the final. Next, um, we will discuss about the devices uh, because there are two points that are really important uh, for the incision, I think. Uh, if you have a very thin needle, you will have a quite thin uh, incision and you have less uh, cutting current that is converted in, in calor spreading and in coagulation current. So in fact, if you have a big knife, uh, you can have a large spreading of it in the size with a very large uh, mucosal whitening. If you use a small knife uh, with a small needle, very thin, in fact, cutting current is all converted to cutting and not a lot in 
8 and therefore there is very few whitening in the edges of the uh, incision. So here you have a large thing, here you have a thin incision with less coagulation around. Two different kind of devices to do the incision. Um, the devices that are needle type and the devices that are um, isolated tip knives. Why it is important to do the difference? Because pushing is safer than pulling back. Once again, if you push, in fact, your scope uh, and your knife is going uh, at the opposite side of the muscle. But if you pull back, your knife is going to the muscle. So it's dangerous to pull. That's why instead of needle type devices have been developed isolated tip uh, devices like uh, uh, the IT knife, for example, uh, with this, you can pull back because when you pull, you will go to the muscle, but with a ceramic at the tip of the knife and therefore you will not damage the muscle. Last thing, pulling back is once again more dangerous. You go to the muscle. So this is dangerous and uh, you should have a shape which is more lateral than really pulling back if you want to be safe. So here, for example, I did a kind of traction, but by reducing the pressure, reducing the puckering effect. And once we get uh, the area, we try to push again. And here we can push more because uh, we are not going to the muscle. So when you are obliged to use tracting, traction um, by tracting your knife you should uh, uh, have a light pressure and when you you can push you uh, can increase the pressure and cut deeper um, because uh, it is less dangerous to push than to pull thank you for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe and share it with your colleagues until next time this is ESD School by Attract.